Indeed year. Um, we have the roll call by the town clerk, please. Chairman Groff? Here. Councilor Berry? Here. Councilor Fryer? Present. Councilor Fritz? Here. Councilor Jordan? Yeah. Councilor McGinty? Here. Councilor Reed? Here. The Pledge of Allegiance to the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there any citizen that wishes to discuss any matter that is not on the agenda tonight? Hearing none, uh, we'll move on. Um, before we begin the uh, public hearing in action on proposed general fund and special funds budgets, I'd like to make a presentation to Charles W. Greer, if he would come up to the podium. This is a uh, proclamation signed by all the councillors. It's the Town of Cape Elizabeth, Cape Elizabeth Town Council Proclamation, Charles W. Greer. Whereas Charles W. Greer began service as a member of the Cape Elizabeth School Board nine years ago and is retiring from the board in early June. And whereas throughout his tenure on the board, Charlie has stood steadfast for quality education for our youth, fiscal responsibility in budgets and in financial practices, and an open access for citizens and parents to decision making. And whereas Charlie helped lead the school board in the community in an aggressive plan to improve the condition of our elementary and middle school buildings so that we now have renovated and newly constructed buildings that will serve generations of Cape Elizabeth students as well as the community. And whereas he has worked cooperatively with the town council in advancing co cooperative arrangements among the schools and the community through the one town concept that have resulted in saved tax dollars and more efficient and effective operations. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council that we thank Charles W. Greer for his service to Cape Elizabeth in enhancing our community for all, and we wish him well as he retires from the Cape Elizabeth School Board, dated this fourth day of May, 1998, at Cape Elizabeth, Maine, signed by all the town councilors. Charlie, congratulations. It's been a pleasure serving with you, and this town appreciates everything that you've done. Thank you. I truly thank you all. It actually has been a trip, and it has been a journey, and it has been an exciting one. It's had its ups and downs. I think my first year on the board was, it was the lowest of any of the years I was on there, and it was all the way up after that. And I thank everyone. I'm deeply touched. Thank you. We're going to move forward to the public hearings and action on proposed general fund and special funds budgets. Is uh, item 146 is consideration of general fund budget. Is there a motion? Councillor Byer. I'll move that uh, we accept uh, or present a budget uh, as listed in item number 126 on several pages of the agenda. Uh, and that item number 146 essentially says that there will be <coughs> gross expenditures of $19,112,087, gross revenues of $5,698,399, with an amount of $13,412,688 to be raised by taxation. The details are all listed under item 146 on the agenda. I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded uh, <coughs> that item 146, the consideration of the general fund budget be approved. It is my understanding prior to the meeting talking to the town manager that there is one typographical error 
in item 146. And yeah, perhaps that could be corrected now. I think, uh, Councillor Byer, you were the one who originally noticed that and talked to the town manager. Paragraph G, where it reads June 30, 1998. It should read June 30, 1999. Is that acceptable that that yes. correction is made to both the, also to the Councillor Jordan who seconded the amendment? Yes. Thank you. All right, so the amendment, uh, I mean, the motion before the council is with that correction. Um, discussion? Shouldn't we be having a public hearing on this first? Yes, we should. <laughs> and uh, discussion can be a public hearing. Discussion by <laughs> members of the community at large. Is there anyone that wishes to comment on the budget? Hearing no comment from the general public, uh, now I would suggest that uh, it would be appropriate to have discussion among the council. Is there any individual who wishes to uh, discuss this particular motion? Councilor Reed. I just had a question regarding um, B and the uh, breakdown of every line item. Uh, some of these are not exactly as I remember them, and I was wondering, um, when we approve these, do, we're approving them and we don't see them again until we see the unexpended balances for a carryover for next year, right? That's correct. What, what the charter reads is that you appropriate amounts to each department and agency, and that those are those appropriations until the last three months of the fiscal year and that you can make transfers within the last three months of the fiscal year. So if a person had an issue with one of these categories, then it would uh, be inappropriate this time to have a lengthy discussion about those? And you, you, you are fixing the appropriations at this point. This would be the appropriate time for that discussion. Uh, I have a discussion with the police, uh, uh, an issue with the police uh, number. And I was just wondering why it's different from the amount that was in the budget uh, the last time we had this as a finance committee. Yeah. I do believe this is the amount that you had the last time as a finance committee. When the police department put together the budget, uh, it did not include any percentage increase for any of the employees. Uh, subsequently, a, a contract was authorized by the town council providing for a three-year contract. Uh, at that time, the council was provided those amounts. Uh, it made a difference of my recollection is around $21,000. And uh, the amount that was you looked at at the last time from the Finance Committee to the time when you reviewed the issues of the police contract, you did receive a revised overall sheet that showed an increase in this line item and a decrease of the same amount in the set aside for the items relating to the pool rehabilitation in the Levitt property. The bottom line was the same. And it's my understanding that the discussions with the town council uh, that everyone was aware that, uh, that that error had been made and uh, that it was being corrected. It was, it was simply an error in terms of my direction to the chief of police uh, as to uh, the fact that all the other departments, including another one that were collective bargaining with the percentage, a percentage increase was included and it wasn't included in the police, and the police, I thought, should have been uh, treated the same as every other uh, department. It was, a, it was a misunderstanding very early in the process, even before the budget came to the town council. Well, I am sorry I missed that. I did see the memo where we saw the narrative on what the error was, but I didn't see a change in the numbers um, at that time. Thank you. Further discussion? Councilor McGinty. I'd just like to reiterate what uh, Councilor Reed said. I didn't see that change either. I also saw the narrative memo that discussed it. However, I don't think this council discussed changing this line item. Um, it just kind of popped up here in the budget. And uh, I think it should have been brought to the Finance Committee to have a full discussion on that issue. And um, it's in there now, but uh, it wasn't there before. Just so the record's clear, my understanding, I mean, I discussed this matter and I thought, sure, it was in the presence of everyone with the town manager. I clearly understood uh, from the memos uh, that this amount had not been included in the police budget and clearly understood the town manager's recommendation that our set-aside for 
the pool and for land acquisition be reduced and by necessity uh, because of the adoption of the contract that this amount be increased. Uh, I apologize if other councillors did not, uh, if my memory is faulty and other councillors did not, uh, uh, were not privy to that same discussion, I felt sure they were. Is there further discussion? Councillor McGint. Well, I'd just like to say, um, as far as raising the taxes, it's, it's unfortunate that this council is going to raise taxes on the town. Um, the state saw fit to grant the homestead exemption that lowered taxes. And I guess what the state giveth, the town will taketh away. So uh, I hope that people don't spend their homestead exemption and their taxes they're going to receive from the state because the town will spend it for you. Any other comment? Councilor Fritz. Um, I would just like to say that I've given the budget considerable thought, and I, I really have not wanted to raise the taxes, but I am going to reluctantly vote in favor of the budget. I, I think the school budget is, is particularly the largest portion of the budget, and I, I just need to um, give considerable praise to the school board in their control of the school budget this year because I think that um, from the figures that I have this is the smallest increase the school budget ha or the school board has proposed um, in the last 15 years the smallest increase and we were certainly in the um, in the 1980s we were having double digit inflation of the school budget and 17 percent, 18 percent, 20 percent, and, and I think that 3.5 is a, is a good number. And um, so I'm willing to vote in favor of that and appreciate the control. Further discussion? I have one, one thing to say as chair. Uh, I would like to thank the members of the town council. It was a, an arduous task uh, to come up with this budget on the town side. I certainly. Uh, I've expressed my thanks to the school board before for all their hard work. But the one thing town citizens should know, that Councillor McGinty is correct that there is uh, a tax increase, but that's not for current goods and services. We have heard for many years in this town that what is truly important is a long-term view and planning past a one-year cycle. I am very proud of this town council because this budget includes set-asides for expenses uh, that are coming down the road for uh, the Levitt property that we have purchased. Uh, there's money in there for that, even though at subsequent times it's going to be bonded. But it's very important to have money in this budget right now for that Levitt property so that we, when we do go to bond, uh, are in a position of financial strength. There's also money set aside to help start the planning for the pool. So the money in this budget, it's not being thrown out the window. I think this council has listened to the citizens of this town and has tried to exercise good fiscal stewardship by looking ahead and not just focusing on one short time frame, but trying to have an overall picture and, and clear view of where we're going. For that, I commend this town council, and I am proud to support this budget. So further discussion. Councilor uh, Barry. I would just like to uh, echo those sentiments, and I'm pleased that you're proud of me. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Always, Henry. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, the uh, uh, f fiscal uh, uh, picture here is uh, difficult uh, to uh, deal with. We've spent many hours. I I've been on the county budget committee from the council as well as the town one, and, and we've gone over figures and figures and where can we cut and where can we uh, economize, and uh, we've done the very best we can. And I think that the school board has done uh, an excellent job in, in all the time that they have put in to try to work with the uh, uh, with the folks in the school, and I think that the department heads have, uh, are, are owed a compliment here for working with us. I think it's been a very professional process as I've worked through it uh, many hours here this year, and we've come up with a budget that will 
even out some of the major uh, capital expenses over a period of time rather than having one spike on a particular year when uh, taxes will just go out of sight. And I think that long-term planning, as uh, Chairman Groff has said, is a, a, sensi a sensible approach to uh, financing these projects that will benefit the town for a long time. And so uh, for that, uh, as, as Councilor Fritz said reluctantly, we are going to uh, approve a, a budget which will raise the taxes a little bit in spite of the homestead exemption. But uh, these are what we have considered as a, as a group, I think, essential expenses uh, to finance the business of the town in a prudent way. And what we have tried to do is apply these taxes prudently the best that we can. So we hope that the, the town will uh, support us in this effort. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Can I make another comment, Joe? Councilor McGinty. Um, I don't want people to think that I don't support strategic or long-term planning. I do. Okay. The problem I have with this is that we don't have a plan in front of us. We're basically writing a blank check. You put a plan in front of me, I'll support something. Mm -hmm. But I don't see the plan. We're saying we're going to have a plan. You know, there's a lot of things we want to do with the Levitt property. You know, some of those things I support. I support rebuilding the pool. We haven't even decided whether we're going to rebuild the pool yet. I support that, but as a council, we haven't decided that yet. So my position is, you put a plan in front of me, give me something to look at, give me something to make some decisions on, but just to raise taxes for a future plan, I can't support that. I have one last comment, just so the citizens of this town understand that if we do nothing with the pool except fill it in, simply fill it in, that will cost more money than we have in this year allocated to be set aside for capital expenditures. So I understand Councillor McGinty and the concept of a plan, but what we have set aside is a minimal amount that does not even cover the cost of scrapping the pool and filling it in. So that's why I feel very comfortable that we have exercised fiscal prudence. Mr. Further discussion. I, I, Councilor I, Berry. Did you have some numbers on that? I mean, I believe it was about a half a million dollars just to close the pool down, right? That's right. And, and we are appropriating what uh, approximate number for? 254. The pool. 1.6 million is the minimum. 229. How much we have? No, this year. 225,000. 225,000 this year toward the project. Right. And it would cost a half a million, over, over twice that much, just to fill it in with sand. That's my point. That's, so that's why plan or no plan, well, I, it's fiscally prudent. I just thought some numbers might be helpful to the people. Thank you very much. Plan or no plan. Councilor Reed. Well, I'm going to vote for it and with no regret. Um, and I do want to say thank you to the, uh, the school board. Um, as many hours as we put in, they put in more. And I think it's interesting that if the school board weren't here tonight, we wouldn't have all these people in the audience. So thank you to the members of the audience who came. Uh, I think that one of the issues that the people at home may want to know about is that community services, as a result of this budget, will have a permanent space, will have an improved space, and the middle school will have the needed class space that they need. Uh, so uh, as Councilor Fritz pointed out, there's a 3.5% increase in the school budget. However, if you back out the capital expenses, uh, it's under 3%. So I'd like to thank the school board and I will be voting to support both the municipal and the school board and the uh, county portion in the budget. <clears throat> Further discussion. Councilor Jordan. No, I want to uh, send out a message that I'm going to support the budget and I feel that we've done a great job as far as looking ahead of some of the things that need to be done in the town and I just hope you Forget the idea of filling in the pool because I worked hard for that pool. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't suggesting that. Neither uh, was I well with the water. <laughs> Just comparing numbers. No. Any further discussion? Hearing none? I wanted to say something oh. Yeah, I just, there's been a lot of talk of no plans, and I, I want to try to set the record straight a little bit. Uh, I think this budget is probably based on more plans than any other budget in the history of Cape Elizabeth. Uh, the school department and the school board fully cooperated in the development of a five-year capital improvement plan. 
Within that plan, it, it contained a plan of improvements to the third floor of the middle school, as was mentioned, for, for community services as well. Uh, there was also a plan worked on two separate committees to fix up the pool while the council hasn't acted on the report. There has been about two and a half years of planning. On the Levitt property, the, while the master plan has not been completed, the council uh, did authorize the purchase of it based on a lot of planning on behalf of the council, based on studies looking at recreational needs, based on a municipal facilities uh, plan that was developed beginning in 1980. Uh, and I could go on and on about some of the open space plans, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm just very, very surprised to hear this evening that we do absolutely no planning when uh, there's been committees that have put in hundreds and hundreds of hours, as well as department heads, members of the school board, teachers, the school technology plan, and uh, I just uh, am very disappointed. Thank you. Before we vote, I would like, oh, Councilor Fritz, I'm Just sorry. one question. Are, are we voting on uh, the entire item 146? That's correct. Through H, right? That's correct. Um, I just had one question on terminology on item D, when it first appears in the terminology foundation allocation. What could you just explain that person? terminology? I would ask Dr. Moles if I could pass it on to her. Councilor Fritz, uh, Fritz is asking the definition of foundation allocation. Uh, wait, wait, why don't we do this? You could come up to the mic. There's people. The foundation allocation that's listed here in the uh, Article uh, D uh, is the portion that the state um, requires that a town uh, raises uh, to fund education. Okay, so okay. That's, that foundation allocation is part of state law and just terminology. That yes, it is terminology that the state uses for uh, educational funding. Okay, fine. Okay. I would be remiss if, I, prior to voting on this budget, I did not take a moment and thank our town manager for his hard work uh, and his uh, constant effort to create a one-town concept where capital expenditures and our budget process, to the degree possible, is meshed together with the town and and uh, our municipal services. Uh, there were count for every hour that any of us have spent on this budget. I'm confident that the town manager uh, spent a multiple of that time. And I would like to personally thank him, I'm, thank him, and I'm sure on behalf of the entire council, thank him for his efforts. Yep. Further discussion? Hearing none, call the question. We have a roll call vote. Council Barry? Yes. Council Byer? Yes. Councilor Fritz? Yes. Councilor Jordan? Yes. Councilor McGinty? No. Councilor Reed? Yes. Chairman Groth? Yes. Motion carries, six yeas, one nay. Moving on to item 147, consideration of sewer fund budget. Uh, this is now the public hearing. Is there any comment from any member of the audience? Hearing none, the public hearing is closed. Is there a motion? Councilor Reed. Would you like it read, Mr. Chairman? Uh, it's short. I think that would probably be appropriate. Okay. Item number 147, ordered that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council, having held a public hearing on Monday, May 4th, 1998, does hereby adopt the fiscal year 1999 budget for the sewer fund with expenditures of $1,499,924 and gross revenues of $1,499,924. Second. Sir? Second? Second. Council McGinty seconds the motion. Discussion? Hearing none, move the question. All in favor? Opposed? Seven to nothing. Item 148, consideration of Riverside Cemetery Fund Budget. Uh, now, public hearing. Is there any member of the public who wishes to speak? 
Hearing none, public hearing is closed. Is there a motion? Councilor Reed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that uh, it be ordered that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council, having held a public hearing on Monday, May 4th, 1998, does hereby adopt the fiscal year 1999 budget for the Riverside Cemetery Fund with expenditures of $17,706 and gross revenues of $35,000. Second. Second. Second by Councilor Jordan. Uh, Discussion. Mr. Chairman, does the $35,000 revenue come from the sale of plots? Or is there another source of revenue? It, it comes from the sale of plots from the actual burial expenses uh, when, we, when we actually charge to dig a grave and right. miscellaneous other fees. Right. Uh, also, the, the other major revenue is uh, interest uh, on investments. And, and this is a projection? That's correct. Yeah. Further discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Carry seven to nothing. Item 149, consideration of Portland Headlight Fund budget. Uh, public hearing is now open. Is there any member of the public wishes to speak? Hearing none, the public hearing is closed. Uh, is there a motion? Councilor Reed. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, be it ordered that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council, having held a public hearing on Monday, May 4th, 1998, does hereby adopt the fiscal year 1999 budget for the Portland Headlight Fund with, rep with expenditures of $342,846 and gross revenues of $361,600. Is there a second? I'll second. Councilor Jordan. Discussion? Hearing none, move the, mo move the question. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Motion carries seven to nothing. Item 150, consideration of Spurwing Church Fund budget. Uh, the matter is now in order for public hearing. Is there any citizen who wishes to speak? Hearing none, the public hearing is now closed. Is there a motion? Councilor Reed. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, be it ordered that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council, having had a public hearing on Monday, May 4, 1998, does hereby adopt the fiscal year 1999 budget for the Spurring Church Fund with expenditures of $6,000 and gross revenues of $10,000. Second? I'll second. Councilor Jordan. Discussion? Hearing none, move the question. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Item 151, consideration of Fort Williams Park capital budget. Matter is now in order for public hearing. Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak? Hearing none, the public hearing is closed. Is there a motion? Councilor Reed. Uh, be it ordered that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council, having held a public hearing on Monday, May 4, 1998, does hereby adopt the fiscal year 1999 budget for the Fort Williams Park Capital Fund with expenditures of $42,000 and revenues of $63,007. Second. I'll second. Councilor Jordan, discussion. I have one thing to say on this particular uh, item. This is, for the, those of you at home, this is the capital budget. This isn't how much it costs the town to run Fort Williams. That's in our operational budget. That's a separate amount. This is simply uh, the money's being spent on capital items. So I don't want anyone to think at home that we make money on the fort. That's not true. Uh, <coughs> this is simply the capital budget. Further discussion? Hearing none, call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Motion carries seven to nothing. Item 152, consideration of Thomas Jordan Trust budget. Matter is in order for a public hearing. Is there any member of the public that wishes to speak? Hearing none, the public hearing is closed. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Barry. It's my turn. Uh, Raise your hand and I'll call on you any time. I move that, uh, order that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council, having held a public hearing on Monday, May 4th, 1998, does hereby adopt the fiscal year 1999 budget for the Thomas Jordan Trust with expenditures of $40,000 and revenues of $45,000. Second. Second by Councilor McGinty. Discussion. Yeah, we both served on that committee, so I thought that was appropriate. It's very appropriate. And Served well. Thank you. 
Any discussion? Hearing none, call the question. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? Motion carries seven to nothing. Uh, item 153 is consideration of proposed fee adjustments. Uh, the matter is in order for a public hearing. Does any member of the public wish to speak? Hearing none, the public hearing is closed. Is there a motion? I'm looking at you again, Councillor Barry. Well, um, all right, I'll... I'll yeah, yeah, I don't think you have to read this one. Uh, I'll, I'll make a motion that the... Uh, just to put it before the uh, group for discussion, that the uh, permit fees uh, be approved as, as listed. As listed in item 153 of the agenda? That's correct. Is there a second? Nobody wants to... I'll second. Councillor Jordan seconds it. Discussion? Yes. Uh, Councillor Barry. On uh, burning permits, uh, the, 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 up until now, there has been no fee for a burning permit. If you want to uh, burn some leaves in the fireplace in the backyard, or if you want to uh, 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 have a, a fire to get rid of the brush from the ice storm or uh, whatever thing, uh, there has been no fee up until now. Now the proposal is $10, which I think is steep. I think it ought to be $2 for that fee. The rest of them look pretty well in line to me, uh, except for one other one, an uh, accident report uh, copy. Uh, I can get one from the Portland Police Department for $10, uh, excuse me, for $5. And here it's proposed to up the charge in Cape Elizabeth from $7 to $10. I, I think uh, $7 is plenty, unless the police chief would like to respond. Uh, I think all they have to do is run it through a copy machine and. Uh, is that, uh, $7. are those suggestions in the form of I, an I, amendment I, to your own motion? That's correct. And does the individual, Councillor Jordan, do you uh, concur with that? Uh? Yes. All right. Discussion on the amendments proposed? Are, are you doing just that? Just amendment? the amendments. Just those two amendments. Right. The burning permit going from 10 to, 10 to 2, and the accident report copy going from staying, staying at 7. I'd, Councilor I'd like to add, an, uh, or at least ask a question before I propose an amendment. Um, well, right now we're just talking about those, that, this amendment. Okay. We can you do yours afterward. Are there any questions on these partic two particular fees that are part of this amendment? Councilor Reed. I, I just would like to know if there's a justification for the $10 fee, then we ought to approve the $10 fee. If it was just that we systematically went through long-standing fees that were X and added a percentage, then I would like to have that discussion. Um, the burning fee, they could charge $100, Henry, and I'd be happy about that, but that's a personal um, opinion. I think we really have to take a look at what goes into a permit being um, issued and if you know the fire chief or a police officer has to appear to settle you know a dispute then we have to know about that um, and also I've gotten a lot of them and uh, they, uh, you go to the police station you fill out uh, one page and uh, either they issue it or they don't depending on whether the wind is blowing okay and, uh, so uh, <laughs> well, I burn brush in my backyard I think two dollars is plenty for a permit ten dollars is exorbitant could, could I come in? Councilor McGinty. His, I think the fire chief just left, so. He just went to another meeting. Okay. Um, but I know that it's more than just filling out the paperwork. Um, it does require occasionally somebody from the fire department to go out and check the location, particularly if a neighbor calls. We have to send somebody out. Um, if the fire department's not available, we send out a cruiser, I'm sure, to check on it. Um, and occasionally we have to send an engine company out to, to help to help control uh, the burn. So. Um, you know, in the, in the long term, although $10 sounds like a lot for filling out a piece of paper, is. there is some action that needs to be taken occasionally on these, and does, you know, obviously that costs resources. But, but that's in another part of the budget. Yeah. Further discussion, Councillor Fritz. I guess I would, I would like to separate out these two votes and vote on, on them separately. Um, it, it, that's what we're doing. Okay. I mean, want a vote on burning permit separate from the accident report. If that's okay, with, if that's acceptable to Councillor Barry and ex Councillor Jordan, I have no problem doing that. Is that acceptable to you, gentlemen? Sure. Fine, thank you. Um, just a, a comment on the copying. Um, I mean, you're, 
you're proposing, um, Councilor Barry, to separate out, have an accident report be $5, but still keeping the police complaint report copy at no. 10 and police. No, well, I, I said to leave the accident report copy as it was at $7. The $5 figure came from the city of Portland, where I got uh, some of the, the accident reports for there. Further discussion? Councilor Jordan. Now, we're just working on these two? That's right all now? we're working on. Okay, because right. I got a couple I'd like to right. clarifications. Just on these two. I have, John? <clears throat> about the photocopying, I, I originally was thinking along the lines with Henry, but the more I think about it, I mean, we have to make an assumption that the dispatchers are doing something over there. They're doing some clerical work or something. When this forces them to stop doing that, to make a copy, the, you know, most copies per page, I don't know what people get these days, 10 or 15 cents or 25 cents probably for municipal copies. Um, so the, the actual cost of the paper maybe is not $10. But you have to make an assumption that the dispatcher has to stop what he's doing to make the copies and therefore has to, we have to pay for his time to do that. And I think that's what this is all about. So I, I'm support leaving it at the $10. Further comment? I don't want to belabor this, but part of why we have workshops is to raise these issues, and it seems a little silly that uh, after the public hearing we're talking about it now rather than well, when we were in a relaxed atmosphere and had the chiefs and had the ability to ask questions of people. I will point out that, Henry, the $5 fee for traffic uh, report that's, that's correct. That's what it costs in Portland. I mean, I get them a lot as an attorney. But uh, I also think that's an anomaly because I also have to get medical records from doctors, and I pay five or six or seven or eight times that. And I think this is one of those situations where the public sector in a lot of these fees has fallen behind the private sector and what we charge. And we're all talking about the budget, and part of the job of the town manager that we charged him with doing was to go through and try to bring these fees into line as to what they should be so that people that utilize these services are paying their full share rather than having it come out of the general tax revenue. We can't have it both ways. We can't complain about our taxes and then at the same time provide services that people aren't for a particular individual that costs money that they're not uh, bearing the cost of those services. That's why I appreciated the town manager going through in a uh, systematic way. Uh, we've had this for comment for a period of time. Obviously, we're discussing it, I think, for the first time now. Um, but my view is I will vote with the town manager's recommendations because I think they're appropriate when based on a variety of factors. Further discussion? Hearing none, we'll take uh, the burning permit amendment first. My understanding, and Councilor Barry, you correct me if I'm wrong, that you wish to have the $10 proposed fee be reduced to $2. Is that correct? That seems fair. All right. All in favor of Councilor Barry's amendment? Uh, raise your hand. Raise your hand, yes. <laughs> Opposed? 4-3, it's defeated. So that amendment is defeated. Now the other amendment was the accident copy report. Um, excuse me for paraphrasing, uh, but I believe that it had been proposed in the original motion to be $10. Uh, your amendment was to keep it at $7. Is that correct, Councilor? Yeah, right. All right. So an, an affirmative vote is to keep it at $7. All in favor? Raise your hand. Three opposed. Four. It's the amendment fails. Uh, three to four. Now we are back on the original motion uh, for all the fees. But I had heard at least one counselor indicate that she would like to discuss some other item. Uh, and obviously, if you ask, uh, that can either be a separate motion or with the consent of the. Uh, individual, Councillor Barry and Councillor Jordan, uh, an amendment could be raised. Councillor Fritz. Well, I, I wanted to ask about the camping permit. Um, we have no fee now, and $10 is proposed. I'm not clear where we have camping allowed. Yeah, 
I'm not sure either. We've always had it listed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't seem right to write anything for it. Well, it seems that if we have a fee, then we're, we're more or less condoning camping and yeah, I don't think we'll have a it. Yeah. So I, 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 I don't think we'll ever collect one, Mrs. Rooks. <laughs> I, I will propose that there remain no fee for camping. <laughs> <I should> say, <laughs> and no fee for not and, and not have it allowed. <laughs> Well, the problem is it is listed. So if any, any, uh, if you're assuming that because there's no fee, as long as it's listed, any inference that we allow camping continues, whether you would charge a fee or not. The one thing with charging a fee, if somebody pitches a tent uh, in the back of the town hall, if they haven't gotten their permit, you have <laughs> some standing to say, no, you can't pitch a tent there. So I think it's the, it's probably the, the charging the fee is the opposite of the rationale that you're, that you're expounding at this is point Is this the time. only place that it's listed as? I don't think it's listed anywhere, but uh, you have, when you have public and private land, private landowners have rights. The public, if in fact you wanted to camp on any public land, this now says that you better have a permit and the policy of the town council, as far as I know, is not to issue permits for uh, camping on public land. So who does issue the permit? Well, I assume it would be the town under the town manager's jurisdiction. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be happy to go check out the campsites. <laughs> more money they can done at my house. <laughs> you can then you have to have your private campground authorized by the planning board. <laughs> It's that, uh, Councillor Fritz, do you want this to be a motion of no fee, but the, just so you understand, in, in this listing, a uh, camping permit will still be listed, because it always has been. And that's always seemed crazy to me, that it would be listed at no fee. It, it seemed to say we could camp, you could camp anywhere. It's your choice, whatever you want, and then we're... Could I ask a question? Councillor Barry. Is that a permitted use within the zoning ordinance? <laughs> Uh, geez, and, I, and I didn't have our town attorney come tonight. It, Darn. <laughs> it is in the miscellaneous offenses chapter of the Code of Ordinances. I think it's Chapter 5, but I could be wrong. And that does specifically prohibit camping on public property. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then then I don't see how we can have a fee for something that's prohibited. <laughs> there could be camping in other locations on private property, as there have been a number of times over the years. I can remember when I was a Boy Scout back in when I was 12 or 13 years old, we camped out at uh, near Councilor Berry's house on a field by two lights. And there were about 600 of us, or whatever number there. And uh, the town didn't get its $10 and probably should have. Councilor Berry yeah, didn't either. <laughs> I mean, we, would we be proposing that if uh, people had a uh, gathering of five tents in their, in their yard, that they would have to have pay $50 for permit? How about this? How about, would you accept this amendment that we simply strike uh, camping permit from this entire schedule. I Can that be the amendment? Really Councillor Barry, do you accept that amendment? Absolutely. Councillor Jordan? Yes, if I may comment, because I was going to ask the question. I let the Boy Scouts and the uh, different ones go up in back of my place and camp. Do I get the $10? <laughs> well, if we, strike, if we strike this, nobody will. <laughs> you owe the private Oh, I owe the $10. Do you accept the amendment, Councillor Jordan? Yes, I do. <laughs> Further discussion, hearing none. Well, well, uh, hold on, is this a change to the ordinance? No, the ordinance already proceeds to prohibit it. <laughs> okay. okay. It's just, this is just a just the issue of striking it from the fee schedule. schedule. Okay. All in favor of striking the camping permit from the fee schedule? <laughs> Opposed? It carries seven nothing. Okay, we're done with that one. Anything else before we get to the uh, main motion? Yes, I have Councilor Jordan. I would like to have it explained to me in how far they would have to move the dwelling. It used to be $15, now you want $500. Now, if it's like Ledbetter's deal, moving it off and pulling a foundation and then moving it back, would that be a $500 deal? Or are you talking about moving it down the road somewhere? This is mov moving a dwelling on a town road, on a, okay. on a public road. It's proposed to go for moving a shed or a garage from $10 to $50, no. moving a dwelling from $15 to $500. That's a very substantial increase. We might have one every 10 years, but when we do have it, it's, it's a major uh, effort on the, on the part of many departments who need to get involved in coordination. 
mm. that's the reason for the large proposed fee. But this is simply moving it on a public way. On a public right? way. It's not, not uh, temporarily okay, moving that's it something off the foundation and putting it back. Now the, uh, the other one I had is a handicap zone without a plate. Does a card in the windshield go as a plate? That counts as a plate, understand? That counts as a plate. Okay, it just says plate here, and I didn't want attorneys to get arguing over that. <laughs> we wouldn't want that. <laughs> Councilor Reed? I just had a question regarding the false alarm fee uh, going up to $500 after the third alarm. Um, have the people who have the potential for that to happen been notified of this change? You said 500 100 I beg your pardon, from $25 to 100 We have not notified everyone uh, of the proposed changes in the uh, fees for false alarms. We used to have a fee for registration of alarms, and that was unpopular. And when that was gotten rid of a year ago, I believe it was, there was a strong message from the council and from the public who was in favor of eliminating that fee that you should be raising the revenue from the people that are causing the problems and not from everyone. And that, that's why, uh, in part, this is proposed. But we have not sent out a specific memo to people with alarms saying we are, we are considering increasing the fees for false alarms. But, but we would as soon as this was enacted, probably? I'd, we probably would on a after a first offense. Okay. But we, we probably wouldn't uh, just send one to everyone, no. Thank you. You know, we don't usually notify everyone of every fee until they encounter it. You know, if you, for example, uh, you know, we don't tell every dog owner that if we impound their dog that the fee has gone up $5. It, uh, well, I just thought that um, on this third uh, alarm where it is for false alarm, that it would give the alarm owner an opportunity to make sure it's not malfunctioning or the kids aren't doing it or something. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah. But we have provisions after the first and second alarm, and, you know, we, we would definitely notify them prior to the third alarm unless it was, you know, uh, a day or two uh, before. But if people are having you know, a series, particularly during a startup phase of false alarms, we, we don't charge them when it's the startup period. When we charge them as, as if they're just reckless, you know, time after time, just going in the house, you know, month after month, year after year of uh, not paying any attention to their alarm. Mr. Chairman, I, I'd like to know if there's a time period uh, contemplated here. Uh, yeah. Third alarm within what, yeah. a year? Or Th this is within the alarm systems ordinance, uh, the, the exact provisions. And what you have here, unfortunately, the column is abbreviations sure. of, of something that really ties into an ordinance. But there is a, an alarm systems ordinance in, I forget what, which larger ordinance. But, it is but there's a period of time. It's a period of time. During which these three alarms That's must right. be sent. It's a year. I mean, if we had one in 1982, one in 1990, and one now, that, that wouldn't be. It's a year. Yeah. Thank you. And, and the year begins from the time of the first alarm to the third alarm. It's not a calendar year or a fiscal year. Okay. It's within a, within a year's period. Yep. Further discussion? Hearing none, uh, we're back voting. I've heard no further amendments. Is that correct, Councilor Reed? Uh, just that in the amendment, it didn't refer to the fact that this, we're voting on this after a public hearing. And I didn't know if that was substantive. And Councillor Barry's motion, he didn't say after having a public hearing on May 4th. Uh, I, I was wondering if that needed to be included. Uh, Councillor Barry, your motion includes uh, after having a public hearing, I assume. Is that Certainly, correct? Certainly, yes. And it Councillor Jordan, you understand that? Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Reed. Mm -hmm. All in favor of this motion? Opposed? Carries 7 to nothing. Item 154, consideration of request to Fort Williams Advisory Commission. Uh, did, did we get a copy of that no. draft motion? I mean, draft memo? I, I, have I don't believe I've seen it. I haven't either. And it says dated May 5th, yeah. so it hasn't been. <laughs> Should have been in your previous packet. Mm, Was it? I don't recall seeing it. I don't know if the others did. Wasn't in this packet? You have a copy? No. Sorry, it's in the, the packet for the next. The them, no, no I, that, is it in the one for the next meeting? I, I don't know. Should have been in this one. Well, what we will do then is an amendment uh, to the agenda for next week. We'll well, why don't we do this? Why don't we? Is there a motion to table item 154 to the next meeting? I so move. Second. Second. All in favor? 
Item 154 is tabled to the next meeting. Citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there any citizen that wishes to discuss a matter that was not on the agenda tonight? If so, please come to the podium. Hearing none, uh, is there a motion for adjournment? I shall move. Second? It's been moved and seconded that this meeting the town council be adjourned. All in favor? Opposed? Seven to nothing. It is anticipated that um, after a short break there will be a uh, town council workshop with the uh, Fort William Centennial Committee. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. You see what I mean about it takes a while. Yeah. Yep. Oh, thank you.